Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back to the Faithful Path, where every Saturday I break down the connection between our daily lives and the beautiful religion of Islam. How they both have an impact on each other and discuss the issues we all have practicing our religion nowadays. So, without further ado, the podcast starts now. <laughs> We sometimes feel that our work may be tiring or dangerous or that we work in hard conditions. But did we ever imagine just one moment what it, what it would feel like if we worked underground in the mine in harder conditions? That's why today I have a mining engineer that is going to talk a little bit about his experience underground. Let's all give a warm welcome to Muhammad Zaki, my brother. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, yeah, How are you today? <laughs> Very good. Thank you. So just to start it off, just quick quickly like introduce mm-hmm. yourself to the audience all right well my name is uh, Muhammad Zaki I'm Mazin's uh, brother uh, as you said I'm a mining engineer and uh, I work at a on a mine site uh, in uh, northern Quebec and uh, yeah that's uh, this is who I am <laughs> so yeah. just before the questions <clears throat> just, just describe your typical day in the life of a mining engineer like your daily routine mm-hmm. so yeah, like a, the term mining engineer is very broad. So you can you can actually find, uh, you know, uh, people graduating from mining engineering work, working in finance, other people working in banks, uh, people working in offices, uh, other people working on field like mm-hmm. like myself. Uh, so it's a very you know it, it opens doors to a lot of things. Uh, but what I do exactly is that I essentially I work in an underground mine and I'm responsible for uh, something called blasting. So this is part of the mining cycle where you will blast the rock and you extract it to uh, process it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I work for a contractor who's responsible to do the blasting s- services at that mine. Uh, so my exact title is uh, technical service representative of WebGen. WebGen is the technology that we use for this uh, blasting process. So a typical day would be something like I wake up at 4, 4.30 a.m., mm-hmm. Uh, and then I get ready. I I go on field. Uh, I I drive to to the to the to the mine site, uh, and then I uh, basically get there around 5:30 a.m. Uh, I get changed. Uh, safety meeting at 6 a.m. And then I go underground around 6:30 or 7. Uh, and then you know like this is where I spend the whole day underground. And then I come up around 3 p.m. And then uh, and then I shower because I'm. You know, like you're, you're you you smell like gasoline, dust, and you're sweating. So yeah. it's uh mm-hmm. it's a it's very hard to not shower. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then uh, essentially, I do just a, a little bit of office work, uh, you know, for 20, 30 minutes, and then I drive back home. Mm-hmm. So I'm actually on a seven seven schedule. So I work for seven days, and then I'm off for seven days. So during my seven days off, I'm back here mm-hmm. home, uh, and then I drive up north again. Uh, for mm-hmm. my seven days that are where I'm working. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the first question for today is, what are some of the challenges and rewards of working in the mining industry, especially mm-hmm. in terms of the environment and conditions you encounter in the northern region? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, working, uh, wor- working you, when you work in a mine, you're working in very harsh conditions, very dangerous conditions so you need to take all the safety precautions that you need to Mm -hmm. take uh so you know like in terms of you know environment uh it's it's also very hard labor work you know so you need to be uh you don't you don't have to be super fit but you just need to make sure that you're ready to lift uh, heavy things lift lift heavy things you know walk a lot do a lot of physical w- work so it's it's very hard in that sense uh other other than that you know it's uh it, you also need to be quick on your feet so you always need to make sure that you're um you know you're you're able to take decisions very quickly mm-hmm. uh you, you can't hes- hesitate much you know you have to be quick on your feet because you know like a mining process is is very is is is, is on 20, 24 7 365 days a, a year so you always, always need to, you know, like be able to think quickly and take quick decisions, yeah. uh, which is something that's not, uh, which is something that's trained. Like I'm still learning how to do that. And it's not, not natural. You know, you have to go through the experience. You have to 
do mistakes to get better mm -hmm. so it doesn't just come like that but you actually have to train yourself mm -hmm. you know and also from a personal point of view you know when i'm there for seven days uh i'm living alone so you know like you you miss your family you miss like spending time at home you mm -hmm. miss just sitting on your couch you know mm -hmm. so yeah that's it and uh in terms of uh rewards uh i would say the biggest thing is that you actually feel a sense of satisfaction after you've mm -hmm. done your work you know you feel like you've done a good day's work and you you go back home feeling like you accomplished uh something you know especially that when you when you work in a mine you know that you're contributing to the uh extraction of mineral resources of the country so you know it's it's a great feeling mm -hmm. to to have uh after uh finishing your day and it makes you appreciate the small things that you have in your life you know like uh just sitting at home with your family or having a nice brunch mm -hmm. uh these things like we take for granted but they're actually huge huge blessings mm -hmm. and you actually don't realize that until it doesn't it's not available to you anymore so mm -hmm. if you sit down and you and you're just sitting in peace on on, on the couch on on a sunday morning it's a it's a huge blessing right it's mm -hmm. uh totally, yeah. yeah it is and maybe <clears throat> one of the biggest rewards is the gold of course yeah <laughs> find the gold. yes the gold <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay. well I, actually you don't you don't get to see the gold when you're in the mine because it's microscopic it's mm -hmm. it, the the rock that gets processed it's it gets through a huge process yeah. afterwards to create the gold bar mm -hmm. so but you don't you don't actually see it when mm -hmm. you're in the mine yeah, the, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no yeah, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> the second question is, how do you ensure safety and sustainability in underground operations considering the mm -hmm. hard conditions you work in and what precautions do you implement to address these concerns? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, like I said, safety is a huge concern uh, where I work. Uh, you know, like I mentioned the 6 a.m. safety meeting. So this is when mm -hmm. we each team will uh, uh, meet to essentially discuss like their safety procedures what they're going to do to m make sure that they're safe uh like what 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 are we each going to do and let's say i work in in something called production the production team so this is we so we so i, I work with other people too that need to uh also say what they're going to do yeah. and what and what safety pr precautions mm -hmm. they're going to take uh and you know like you always need to make sure that you're wearing your pp at, at, at all times uh the 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 supervisors will always promote uh, the number of days without an accident so they're always going to say like okay like we we've had six days without in injuries good good job guys also al although it's rare because it's very very easy to hurt yourself mm -hmm. it's just it's super easy to just get like you know like to break a finger or mm -hmm. you know so you always need to make sure that you you're 100 percent safe always need to make although you know like that you've done this task a million times you still need to make sure that you're doing it in, sure. in a safe manner yeah, like yeah. again and in terms of you mentioned su sustainability uh the this is more of a i would say it's another it's everyone's job of course to contribute to the environment but in a, on a in a mining uh site there is a department for everything you know mm -hmm. so like let's say uh making sure that the ground or you know the underground mine is safe to go in we have the ground control for rock mechanics to make sure that we're that the uh the cage which is the ele the elevator that brings people up up and down uh that it's safe that we have the shaft uh team we have uh you know like the supervisors we have basically uh a team for every single uh thing mm -hmm. in a in a mine so for sustainability we also have the environment team you know they take care of the uh, let, let's say the water effluent that goes back into the environment, making sure that it's a, it's at a certain pH le level before, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, uh, giving it back to mm -hmm. the environment. And mining has a bad reputation because of because of the people think that it's it's it it it's it's uh, it creates a lot of pollution, and that's true. But at the same time, the like sp specifically here in Canada, if someone wants to open a mine they also need to tell the government how they're going to restore the land mm -hmm. uh, back to however it was before. So this is something new. It's not really new. It's, it's called rec reclamation, which has become uh, a mining uh, part of the mining process. 
but you know back in the day people would just go mine and they would leave every, every everything there and then they would create like a lot of uh some, something called acid mine drainage which is extremely uh bad for 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 the for the for the water for the mm -hmm. fish environment for na nature in general yeah but we've we've added so many regulations that now it's almost impossible for a mine to cease to exist and uh, continue to pollute. And even in that case, someone who, uh, a company that opens a mine, they also need to make sure, they always need to follow up with, with, with the land where they've, where they've extracted the minerals that that land is safe. Mm -hmm. You know, so we've, we've, we've come such a long way and everything changed so much that I don't think mining has the should have the same rep reputation that it had before that's true mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah it's a it's a it's a you know like it's 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 very very environment friendly right right now and it's uh, it's it's I, I would say that everybody who works in a mine is aware of the the environment that where they work in and a lot of mines will actually promote that they will they will always say you know like one of our priorities is to make sure that we are you know considering the local com com communities mm -hmm. the local uh environment uh which is something to be proud of yeah like what if like what equipment do you guys wear underground like before going in the mine? so the ppe consists of of course your overalls your safety belt uh gloves gl glasses and your hat and also something we call uh we this is specifically for underground miners we we also bring a lamp that gets mm -hmm. attached to your hat mm -hmm. because th there's no lighting uh un underground you have yeah. to bring your own source of light so like this, this is it's like a flashlight yeah exactly uh, like a flashlight yeah okay. that's it yeah okay mm -hmm. perfect so last question um you, <clears throat> you worked a little bit during uh, ramadan of course mm -hmm. so how how did it feel to work in the mine during ramadan without water or <laughs> food and lifting yeah. heavy stuff while fasting and also how did you manage time for work sleep and god mm -hmm. so i'm not gonna lie it was super hard to work during ramadan because it's uh it's it's not easy you know i would wake up before suhoor and then i would spend the whole day at work doing mm. hard physical work and then come back home at night you know like eat and just like feel like i want to yeah, sleep you know so yeah. time was very very tight and it was very hard to go through but for some reason you just go you, you actually don't know what your body is capable of mm. doing some, sometimes you, yeah unless you try it you don't know that you that this is actually possible, mm -hmm. you know, and it's it's like it's mm -hmm. it's it's something that yeah. I, I don't know how I how how I did it, but I just did it, you know, mm -hmm. and and it was very yeah like time was very very tight, so I didn't have much time to do anything besides be, 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 beside you know like fasting, eating, praying, and going back to sleep, yeah. you know. So during my seven days that I was there, uh, I was this is pretty much what. I was doing mm -hmm. almost every single day right. and just like get like 30, 30 minutes of TV time that mm -hmm. when, whenever I'm At feeling least, yeah, tired. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of entertainment. <laughs> so finally, what like give one advice for people who feel that their work environment is maybe dangerous or tiring. Mm -hmm. So I would say, well, dangerous and tiring might be two different. So if you're working in a dangerous environment, that's more, you know, like m make sure that you're always safe you know take safety very very ser seriously you know like you you always think that you want to go back home safe mm -hmm. you know like it, having the smallest injury can can, can cause the huge can cause a huge inconvenience and you don't want to deal with that because mm -hmm. it's it's very very tiring you don't you don't want to wait in the hospital you don't want to you know like be in in mining they they used to have well we still have that term called the cowboy effect because it's a very it's not a macho environment, but it's a, it's a very man, not man dominated either. But well, most of the people who work underground, not not in the office yeah. are men. And the like, oftentimes people want to show that they're they don't care about safety, like they can do it, like the, the, they can be a cowboy, mm -hmm. you know, because they, they, they think that they can do any, anything in a safe way. Yeah. But I've seen a lot of videos where people get their lives destroyed because of a very, very small error that in their heads they think that, oh, I, I can do that, it's fine. Like, mm -hmm. let me just like put this here and yeah, let me just sure. like put one leg on the, the ladder and the other one like bolting mm -hmm. something. But 
it's not worth it you know mm -hmm. tiring i would say uh everything gets you you it every, everything will 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 pay off at the end you know mm -hmm. like you you don't go to the gym thinking that I'm going to go to the gym and just mm -hmm. sit there and expect results. You, you yeah. have to go through the pain. No pain, so, no gain. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you always, you always have to think that you, you, you will experience pain to grow. You will go through the pain to rise. Mm -hmm. without, without that, if you always stay in your comfort zone, you will never, never, you will never ever grow. You will always mm -hmm. deal with the same problems. You will, you will not, nothing will ever get fixed. The only s solution is to just go through it. Go face mm -hmm. your problems don't uh do anything that you know that puts a blind in front yeah. of you to just to distract yourself yeah it's fine to you know have entertainment sometimes mm -hmm. but it's 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 only to take a break but if that's yeah. but if that's your main goal to that's just true. use entertainment and relax because that's your goal then you're always going to stay in your comfort zone mm -hmm. right you always have to face face your problems you always have to work you always have to be tired to grow and humility is actually one other big thing mm -hmm. you know like pe people people often think that you always have to be rude you always have to be uh you always have to hustle you always have to uh you know go and make sure that you're on top of people to make sure that you're you advance but mm -hmm. i would say that that's completely wrong i would put humility above anything if you're mm -hmm. if you're humble with people if you're kind if you give more than you take, mm -hmm. then you've got yourself a good life. This That's is true. the formula for su yeah. su success mm -hmm. to me. You always, you, you always give more than you take. That's true. Okay, now time mm -hmm. for the five rapid questions. Okay. Um, the first question is, who is your favorite reciter of the Quran? Okay, uh, I would say uh, Sudes. Abdul Rahman Sudes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, he's one of my top three. Too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, second one is, what is your favorite name of Allah and why? Mm -hmm. I would say uh, El Karim uh, because mm -hmm. uh, I feel very blessed in the sense that you know, like I, I have my, I have my brother, <laughs> mm -hmm. I have uh, my my family. I get to see them. Uh, you know, like I'm living a you know like a pretty stable life right 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 now after mm -hmm. many years of disruption. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, like I would like I I can definitely count a lot of bl blessings that I have mm -hmm. and. It's something to be very, very grateful for. So Al-Kareem would be one for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, third one is, what is the last book that you read or currently reading? Mm -hmm. I've, I've, uh, currently, I'm reading uh, The Life of the Prophet. For, I forgot the author's name, but it's, uh, it's basically des describing a lot of events that happened in the mm -hmm. life of our prophet. And uh, like I'm, I've watched a series before by Mustafa Husni that, it, that uh, is called uh, Noor. And he basically explained uh, what, like, it's it's a very detailed se series about our prophet and mm -hmm. what what he went through, and all the difficulties he went through, and how he, you know, like he 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 always chose peace above anything else, mm -hmm. uh, which is why I was talking about humility earlier, yeah. you know, because if anyone was to, uh, you know, go and be rude to his enemies it would be our prophet you know yeah, he no, he went through sure. so much him and the sahaba that mm -hmm. we can't complain about anything yeah. living right now like we have such a like the Easy fact that life, yeah. we have such a great life that we can practice our religion without being attacked mm -hmm. just that during our prophet's life that mm -hmm. he was fighting for that for us you know yeah. so like i see no reason why we should complain about anything in our in our mm -hmm. lives at the moment we have such a good life so yeah, that's the book I'm reading, and uh, I'm I'm always re relating uh, what I'm reading to the series, which mm -hmm. is cool because okay. it, it helps me understand mm -hmm. better. Uh, first yes. question: uh, If I give you a time machine right now and mm -hmm. you can only use it once, would you go to the past or to the future? Mm hmm. I would go to the future, but I'm but I'm scared to go to the future because what if I choose a time where I'm dead and then I can't come mm -hmm. back? <laughs> So I would go to yeah. the past and mm -hmm. invest all my money in the big stocks, big stocks. Yeah, right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And last question: uh, In the future, with your wife and kids, mm -hmm. which, like, what dream country would you like to live in? You could choose anything. Mm -hmm. Um, right now, I'm not thinking about leaving Quebec. To be honest, I really like it here. You know, we have. Uh, I feel like Quebec is a great place to is a great mm -hmm. place to live in. 
uh, personally, from my experience, like all the Quebecers that I've dealt with are super nice people, very, very smart. Uh, they're, they're, no, nobody's ever, like all the people, all the Quebecers that I met are never, you know, like they're, they're, they're always very hardworking people. They always want to accomplish things. Mm -hmm. Um, we've, we also have great security. We have great resources here. We have all the human essentials, the, the essential things that we need as humans, we, we can find it in abundance here Yeah. in Canada too. You know, you know, like we have the biggest amount of pure water, uh, the most wood, you know? So yeah, I would, I would choose Quebec. You mm -hmm. stay in Quebec. Yeah. Yeah. It's That's a, it's a great place to yeah. be in. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so thank you so much, Hamad, for yep, joining on the no podcast. Problem. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like, follow, and share. And I'll see you next week on the Faithful Path. <laughs>